There are a bunch of really nice looking mounts attached to the various Glory of the Hero and Glory of the Raider achievements, so I thought it'd be an interesting video to go through the ones that are soloable, and not just the individual achievements, but I'm only going to be bringing up the ones that are soloable, as in the full meta. All of the achievements within the meta, you can go and do solo, and pick yourself up a new mount. So this isn't going to be a full in-depth guide on every single achievement and how you do them all because there's quite a few metas that are soloable now and there's a ton of achievements across the board. But what I will be doing is going in detail on the ones that I feel do need a guide and I think that would be the better approach overall. So the way I'm going to approach this is run through all of the various metas that are soloable and the amount that they give. And then after that, I'm going to backtrack and go through the metas and the achievements that I feel like you need some help with. So then you've kind of got the choice. You can either watch and figure out the ones that are soloable and just go at it yourself, or you can stick around and see the ones that I feel like you need some advice with before you do get started. So the first one up is going to be the glory of the hero. Getting all of those done will give you the reigns of the red proto drake. Not a great looking mount, but you know, it's not bad. And pretty much all of these achievements can be done by any class. None stand out to me as one that would be difficult on a particular class. Although there are some achievements where you need to whittle down mobs slower. So if you're a class or a spec that doesn't have any answers to kind of low DPS, like a Crackling Jade Lightning, then you might be in trouble on those ones in particular. There is also one which is Lockdown, which will take multiple days or weeks if you've not got any progress on it already. And unfortunately, there's no way around that because it's just based on RNG, the mobs that you fight within the dungeon. So you'll just have to keep coming back until you've got that done. So unfortunately, it does mean this meta can't be done in one day. The next one up is going to be the Glory of the Ulduar Raider. And completing this will actually give you two mounts. It'll give you the Ironbound Proto Drake and also the Rusted Proto Drake. And all of the achievements in here are pretty easy, honestly. There's a couple that, you know, you need to kind of use your brain a little bit for. And we'll talk about those later. But overall, very, very straightforward raid to do. And can be done within less than an hour, like 20, 30 minutes if you know what you're doing. And you'll get yourself two mounts. So definitely one worth doing if you haven't got these already. The next one that's soloable is going to be the Glory of the Ice Crown Raider 10 man and Glory of the Ice Crown Raider 25 man. Completing 10 man will give you the Bloodbath Frostbrood Vanquisher, and doing 25 man will give you the Icebound Frostbrood Vanquisher. So you'll have to pick which difficulty or raid size you want to do because you'll be locked into that difficulty, sorry, the raid size on that character. So if you do 10 man, you won't be able to do 25 man until the following week on that character at least. But you could bring in an all and do it on that if you wish. And you might be saying, oh, well, you can't do, been waiting a long time for this solo. You can now, they fixed that not too long ago. So that is a, an achievement that is soloable now without any pets or gimmicks like that either. You just can go and do that, so... Yeah. There is one achievement in here as well that will take two lockouts if you've not got any progress towards it, and that is once bitten twice shy. But if you do have progress, you'll be able to get this full meta done in one day. The next one up that's soloable is going to be the Glory of the Cataclysm Hero, and getting this done will award you with the Volcanic Stone Drake, which isn't a bad looking mount. Now, the, all of these can be done in a day, and the vast majority of them are very, very simple to do, very straightforward. There are a couple that are a little bit of a pain, one in particular that you might just want to bring a friend for anyway, just to make your life easier. But they're all soloable and can be done in one day, and I'll talk about the more difficult ones obviously later on. The next one up is going to be the Glory of the Cataclysm Raider, which will award you with the Drake of the East Wind. And this can all be done in one day, and it's probably one of the easier metas to do. It is spread across three raids, but all the raids are fairly short. And there's only really one achievement in this list that kind of sticks out to me as one that's a little bit of a pain and we'll, we'll once again talk about that but definitely one that i would recommend taking a look at doing because it's pretty quick to do pretty straightforward for like 90 percent of the achievements so yeah definitely a thumbs up on that one the next soloable one gives a nice mount and that is the glory of the dragon soul raider and that's going to give the twilight harboring amount quite a nice mount something you can't get done in one week though unfortunately unless you've already got progress the last boss fight will require you to kill basically in a different way four times. So if you've got no progress, it will take you four weeks to get this done. For the most part, though, all of the achievements here are fairly straightforward. There is a couple I want to talk about from this. But once again, something I'm pretty sure any class can get done. None in particular that stand out to me as something you need a particular class or spec for. The next one up is where things get a little bit more tricky to solo, and that is going to be the Glory of the Thundering Raider. And this, completing this will give you the Reigns of the Armored Sky Screamer. And there's a few achievements in here that are an absolute nightmare to solo. They do require specific classes as well, unless you can come up with some really, really clever use of game mechanics. There's a couple that are kind of time-gated as well. One you can choose by resetting, but one will take you four weeks as well. 
In terms of the classes, I know that can definitely solo all these. Uh, Monk can do it. Demon Hunter, I believe, can do it. Hunter definitely can do it. And Warlock definitely can do it. So the ones I didn't mention there, you'll either have to find... Oh, Mage can definitely do it as well. Uh, everyone else will maybe have to look into a way that their class is able to do it that I'm not aware of. Or they'll just have to come up with something themselves. So yeah, this one, definitely going to be a bit more of a challenge to take on. The final one out that's going to be soloable is the Glory of the Draenor Hero. Unfortunately, the mount reward from this is kind of lame. It is a boar. It's the Frost Plains Battle Boar. And I believe all of these are doable in one day. So you've not got anything like that to worry about. Although you will require a class that can resurrect for one of the achievements. You also will need a class that can knock back for one of the achievements. So there's some in here that will require kind of specific classes and specs to get done as well. So those are all the ones that are soloable. So you can head off and give them a go if you wish. Next up though, I'm going to be running through the achievements in particular from each of them that I feel like you would need a little bit of advice on uh, before you do tackle it yourself. So the first one, the glory of the hero. Most of these are quite straightforward. As I said, some of them, or all of them, I would recommend taking off your Heart of Azeroth and Corruption for just in case. And then some of them will require you to strip down to no gear. Two of those in particular that come to mind are the Abuse the Ooze. Uh, this is the one within the Halls of Stone, last boss. And you'll want to DPS the boss down to below 50%, which you'll need to take off your gear for so you don't kill it instantly. And you will need a low damage in spell once again, Crackling Jade Lightning being great for this. And you use it basically AFK until you do have the uh, Iron Sludges. Similar story with the Incredible Hulk, you'll DPS down the Scourge Hulk. And then you want it to be about, I think, like 20-30%. And then you'll stand in the middle, you'll DPS down the boss a little bit. The sword will come down and then it'll progressively kill the A-bomb and you'll be good to go. So you'll just need to be a class for a lot of these where you're in a good position to kill things slowly and then kill things quickly when you need to as well with your gear on. But as I said, I would recommend just getting used to not wearing your heart of Azeroth and corruption for most of this stuff. The next one I want to talk about in this same matter is the Zombie Fest. And while this one's pretty self-explanatory, uh, you basically just want to run through the dungeon and avoid many as many of the zombies as you can in the first section of the dungeon. You'll kill the waves of mobs and the bosses. Then you'll guide Arthas through the kind of tavern or the, the town hall. You'll kill the third boss. And then apparently if you go through the whole of the last section, pick up all of the zombies, there's enough there. But I wasn't too convinced and I would rather backtrack a little bit and collect a bunch of zombies from there. So I was collecting the zombies from the first section of the dungeon, bringing them all the way through to the last section, pulling all the zombies in the last section, then kind of waiting for them to huddle up and then killing them off that way, just to ensure you do have at least 100, because obviously it's very difficult to track that you, you've got 100 there. Next up, moving on to the glory of the Ulduar Raider. Once again, very, very easy raid to do. There's a couple of kind of, a couple of pain points for people though. One is Iron Dwarf Medium Rare, which is from Razor Scale, which is kind of the second boss. And for this, what I'd recommend doing is once again, taking off pieces of gear, especially your Heart of Azeroth and Corruption, and then letting all the dwarves spawn and they'll progressively kill the NPCs. But just ensure the NPCs fix all of the harpoons before you kind of let them be killed. And then once all the NPCs are dead, the mobs will have no choice but to be on you. And then you basically just AFK until you've got 25 or more rune guardian dwarves. And then Razor Scale around this point will enrage as well. When that happens, you'll bring Razor Scale down. You'll DPS it down a little bit. So once again, this is where you'd want to take off your gear before the fight. It's probably best, best just being completely naked, honestly. And you'll DPS her down to like 50%. She'll stay grounded permanently and then she'll do an enraged deep breath, which will one shot all of the Iron Dwarf. So you'll get that done very easily. And then one that confuses people as well is the I love the smell of Sarah in the morning. And this one's really simple, actually. You just pull the boss, don't do any damage, make sure you've got no kind of passive effects that can do damage. And then you just AFK until enough Saranite spawns that, that it makes the Saranite animus. You kill the animus and then you can kill the boss. The next one up is the Glory of the Ice Crown Raider 10 slash 25 man. The achievements are pretty much the same. And the vast majority of these, you can just kill the boss instantly and you'll get the achievement. You've probably already got most of them. Obviously, once bitten, twice shy, you'll even need to burn the boss fast enough that you don't get bit or stick around for a little bit and wait for yourself to be bit. Neck Deep in Vile, similar situation. You can just kill the boss before that phase happens and you'll get the achievement. Portal Jockey isn't as complex as it sounds. You'll just use like the Crucible Essence in your Heart of Azeroth. And you'll be able to heal the boss with that. Obviously, if you're watching this in the future and you don't have the Heart of Azeroth, then you'll need to find an alternative way of healing the boss. But player, like class heals work as well. So you can use those. And then been waiting a long time for this. This is one of those achievements that's kind of caused a lot of pain in the past. But right now, at least, it's super simple. You can do it solo. You don't need a pet or a guardian or anything like that. 
You'll pull the boss, you'll AFK in phase one, so don't do any damage. Leave all the adds up. Necrotic play will go on you, it'll expire, it'll jump to the adds, it'll kill the adds. And then you just need to make sure you're in range of the adds when it kills all of them. And then it'll jump back to you, you'll have like 10 or so stacks. And you just repeat that until you've got 30. The only thing that's difficult here is not getting knocked off the room by the shadow traps. You can take the risk and stand under the throne. But sometimes it can knock you in a, an awkward direction and you might be knocked off. But it's up to you. The alternative is just slowly moving around the room whenever you see a shadow trap be cast. But either way, all of these can be done in at least two resets. Unless you've already done the raid once before, then you can get it all done in one reset. The next one up is the Glory of the Cataclysm Hero. Very similar story here. Most of these can be done by killing the thing very fast or taking off your gear and whittling things down slower. So I'm not going to go into detail on those. There is one in particular though that is a pretty big pain to solo and it might not be worth trying to solo it because it is very annoying to do. And that is the cr uh, crushing bones and cracking skulls. If you bring another player along, this becomes a hell of a lot easier. But it's not that it's difficult, it's more just annoying, honestly. So it requires you to be defeat the boss after killing 10 angered elementals with the skull cracker. Now this wouldn't be too bad, except the amount of angered ele earth elementals that spawn are based on the players hit by quake. So if you're on your own, only one is ever going to spawn and they eventually expire as well. So the way this works is you want to take off all your gear, you want to make a keybind or a macro for sit, and then you basically want to turn your back towards the boss and spam sit. You can wait until he's casting Quake if you want to, but I just found it easier to just AFK and spam sit. And then what you need to have happen is for him to cast Quake and it hit you five times in a row. It has to hit you five times in a row. If it hits you four and then you get don't get hit by the fifth, then you get hit by the 6, that's not really any good because by then the first one will start to expire and you won't really get it reliably. The other thing that makes this annoying is he's only ever going to cast Skull Cracker twice. He casts it at 66% and 33%. So you'll want to go in the fight with a low damaging spell. You'll pull him down to like 75-70%-ish. Just make sure you don't accidentally take him any lower. And then you'll basically AFK until you have 5 in a row Quakes hit you. So you, then you have 5 Angered Earth Elementals. And when you get hit by the fifth, you'll see the debuff on you. Then you want to take the boss down to 66%. The fifth Angered Earth Elemental will spawn. You'll then get hit by the Skull Cracker. That's your first five done. Then you'll bring the boss down to like 40, 45%. And then you'll have the same thing happen. You'll get hit by five quake, Quakes in a row. And then you'll bring the boss down and get hit by Skull Cracker again. It's just really tedious. You're going to have to be resetting this boss quite a lot to get it done properly, I'd imagine. There's been a few times I've actually done too much damage or nearly killed him, etc. So it's just really finicky. And it gets made a lot easier if you do bring multiple people. So the next one up is the Glory of the Cataclysm Raider. And overall, this meta is pretty simple to do. Even the one that I'm about to talk about is fairly simple as well. It just had a kind of low obtained rate for how many players have done this. So I thought I'd talk about it quickly as well. So that is Stay Chill, which is to defeat the first boss of Front of the Four Winds while you have seven stacks of Wind Chill. And basically, you'll go into the boss, you'll head over to the Nazir's platform, you'll stick around on there. I would recommend doing this on Heroic. It does actually make it easier. You'll get a few stacks of the Wind Chill. And then when I had six stacks, what I did then was jumped over to one of the other bosses' platform, killed it, jumped back to Nazir, refresh my stacks, getting, giving me the seventh, and then I'd jump over and I'd kill Nazir once I get the seventh, and then I'd jump over to the final boss, and then all three would be dead, and I've still got the debuff. And that's it, really. It's really not too bad of an achievement at all. I never missed getting these stacks, even with gear on, so that shouldn't be a problem either, unless you may be a tank spec, but I don't see that being a problem. The next one up is the Glory of the Dragon Soul Raider, and overall not too bad either. Uh, the first one we'll talk about is Ping Pong Champion. You might need a little bit of mobility to get this done, but very easy to do yourself. You just kind of want to position the boss and yourself so that you're near the orb and he's always kind of behind you, so that there's never really a risk of him accidentally hitting the orb. Then you'll bounce into the orb, you'll run around, you'll kind of do like a U-shape, and then you'll hit the orb again, and you'll just keep repeating that until you've hit it 10 times. And then on the 10th, you'll pull the boss up more, We'll pull the boss over so he's in front of the orb you get hits by the orb and then you'll be able to finish the fight no problem the next one up is deck defender and this one's a little bit more tricky but still very easy to do you basically just need to stop any swirlies from happening in general and you can do that by making a macro with target twilight space assault space drake and then under that slash cast some kind of range spell that you've got that does decent damage and then whenever the drakes are coming you'll spam that macro you'll kill them before they even get to do the barrage and then outside of that just soak the massive swirler and you can track this achievement as well to see if you failed it. And if you do fail it, just jump off. But yeah, you basically can kill the two Twilight Drakes before they even get to do anything 99% of the time. 
So it just makes things a lot easier. One thing to keep in mind though, if you kill it too early, it'll actually stay on one HP and it will kind of need to pass the middle section before it's able to fully be killed. I had that happen a couple of times where I didn't quite realize that it hadn't been killed and then it's doing the barrages and I end up failing because of that. But overall, if you have a macro and a range spell, it should be pretty easy to get that done. And then the final one here is maybe he'll get dizzy very, very easy as well. But once again, kind of obtained by a, a kind of low percent so all you need to do when you jump onto Deathwing's back, you'll kill a left side kind of tentacle thing and a right side tendril. And then you'll make him spin left and you'll stand in the hole where the tendril is. And then you'll run over to the right and stand in the hole and it'll spin right. And then you do the left and then you do the right. And then the achievement should show as done. And then you'll be able to kill the boss as you normally would and you'll get that achievement. So this meta is where things start to get a bit more tricky and that is the glory of the thundering raider. The first achievement up is the lightning overload and this one's technically not soloable but it's been able to be bugged out for multiple expansions now and I assume it still will be for multiple more. So what you need to do for lightning overload is take Jin Rock to kind of like this southeast corner and you'll be inside the corner and the orb will kind of spawn in the wall and then when there's two orbs they'll both be trapped inside the wall they'll be on top of each other and you'll get yourself the achievement. It might take a few attempts to get this right, but once you do get it right, you'll just get the achievement. You won't have to do anything crazy. You just stand in a spot and there you go. The next one up is an absolute pain and that is soft hands on G Kun. And this either requires you to come up with some clever ways of using items within the game, or you'll need to be a hunter, a mage, a warlock, or a monk. Those are the only classes I could see that were able to reliably do this. And the way this fight works is you'll pull the boss, you'll go jump onto the platform below you'll break the eggs you'll get a feather and then you'll fly up and you'll collect this golden egg that will fall off the kind of nest that's above the nest that you jumped down onto and on the right hand side of that upper nest is where the golden egg will fall off and then you'll take that egg and you'll need to get it back onto the main platform and that's where things start to get tricky because normally you'd throw it to another player and that's where like hunter mage monk come in handy because you can either use things like levitate or disengage or you can use like Transcendence or the Warlock port to get yourself back onto the main platform. And then the final thing that makes those classes in particular useful, especially Hunter and Mage and stuff, is they'll use their pets to then kill the boss. Because while you're holding the egg, you can't actually use any spells. So how you would generally approach the fight is you would do slash stopwatch to get up the stopwatch. You would hit the boss with something and then start the stopwatch. And then you can even DPS down the boss a bit more if you wish to. Just make sure you're not going to kill it with any RNG spells, which is what actually happened on one of my attempts. And then you'll jump onto the nest down below, the one that's got like big blue, uh, big red beam, I should say. You'd kill the eggs there. You'd get yourself a feather. And then when the timer gets to about 10 seconds, you'd fly up to the right hand side of the nest. Obviously, before the fights began, you've put down your teleport or your monk clone or whatever you need to on the platform. And then a few seconds later, the egg will drop down, you'll grab it, and then you'll put yourself back onto the platform using your teleport or your levitate or whatever. And then you'll find some way of killing the boss without dropping the egg. And that's where things get tricky as well. You even need to have a pet up or you need to have timed dots really well, or you've used like corruption RNG. Either way, you have to come up with some clever way. And that's what makes this achievement really difficult. The final matter to touch on is the glory of the Draenor hero. And most of these are pretty easy to do. The only ones that are kind of difficult uh, because they require a specific class or spec. And the first one up is No Ticket. That is going to be in the Green Rail Depot. You'll go in there and you'll need just some kind of knockback. So Ring of Peace or Typhoon. Those kind of things will knock a mob back. And you'll wait for the ads to group up and you'll knock them off. And it doesn't have to be 20 at once. You can do them in chunks if you want to. That's fine. You just need a way of knocking them off. The other one is Leroy where you'll just need a class or spec that can use a Resurrect. And you'll Resurrect Leroy and you'll be fine from there. So that just brings us to the end of the video and this is an idea I've had down for a while. I've just really struggled on how to make this into a video without it being insanely long by covering all the achievements or by making it so I cover one and then move on to the next because then you're waiting a really long time to find out all the ones that are soloable. So I thought this was the best approach. I'm not entirely happy with it but I thought it was a good compromise overall for the video idea and hopefully it's something you enjoyed as well and now you're going out and doing some kind of meta achievement solo you know, giving you something else to do, especially while we're waiting for Shadowlands to launch. So outside of that, look out for more videos coming soon. Hopefully this was helpful to you. And yeah, thanks for watching, guys. See ya.